I would say if I was going on any commercial fishery anywhere throughout the warmer spring, summer, even early autumn months, this hard pellet approach that I'm going to show you today is the first thing out of my bag. It's so reliable because it covers so many different options of how the fish want to feed on the day. So we're going to be concentrating on hard pellets. We're going to be looking at how to feed them on a longish pole. It's not about, you know, 16 meters or anything like that. It's about whatever the length of pole that you're comfortable fishing. And we're going to try to identify where the fish are. Are they on the bottom? Are they in the middle layers? Are they at the top? And we're going to we're not gonna to try to tell them where to be. We're going to respond to where they want to be. And that's what makes this approach so deadly and amazing. There's loads of little tricks I've got to try and get you a few extra fish. So I think we should take a look. So let's talk a little bit about the sort of way and the sort of fishery that this would really excel on. Personally, I think this is a great method for carp, okay? You will catch F1s on it. You will catch odd skimmers and bream and tench on it, but mainly this is if you're going somewhere and there's a lot of carp in the venue. Um, they're predominantly, they love a hard pellet. It's a sort of bait that they just, it's almost their staple diet. They love eating them. And it's just really, we can control how to catch them or try and figure out how they want to be on the day. So I would say anywhere where you've got, I mean, it doesn't really matter the depth. It could be three foot deep. It could be 13 foot deep. It doesn't really matter what the main depth is, but you need rigs for fishing on the bottom and you need rigs for fishing up in the water. Now, today I'm faced with about, I would say five and a half, six foot on this long pole. Let's say it's about six foot, I would say. So. First of all, I need a rig for fishing on the bottom. And I'm fishing for carp, so I've got a nice strong 15 Dura slipping at the top. And I've got nice durable mainline in 022 um, AccuPower, something really strong. Now, there's no wind at all today. It's really flat and calm. Um, this is a great day for fishing this sort of method because uh, the fish will want to come up in the water because it's nice and warm, but there's not loads of ripple, so there's not a lot of cover, so they'll they'll probably change. Sometimes they'll go down to the bottom and have a feed, they'll come back up, and you've got to almost stay in touch with it. So I don't need a massively heavy float because I've got a hard pellet on. When you've got a hard pellet, it almost locks itself onto the bottom. So I don't need a, I don't need anything sort of like hugely big. I've got a 412s on here today. If there was any sort of wind and ripple, I'd probably have a 414s, but I've seen the forecast, it's no wind forecast, so a nice light float because of those conditions. And I've just got a diamond style float, which I love, nice thick two mil bristle. If you're gonna fish with hard pellets, big bristles, all right? You need like a carp XS, which has got two and a half mil. Or for me, I love these diamonds in, uh, in two mil. That's absolutely spot on. My shot is all down at the bottom, an inch apart. I've got all the shot spread uh, here at the bottom because I'm focusing on catching on the bottom, not really trying to catch them on the drop i just really want them to see the pellet as it goes down so i've tried spreading this out before i can't say that i get any real advantage on doing that so just sort of spread them out at the bottom six inch hook length nice and strong 018 and i've just got an 18 on and i would advise a smallish hook i think an 18 kkh if you're fishing for bigger carp kkm if you're fishing for say smaller carp that's the hook. You don't want a massive hook. You want a nice small hook. Trust me, it's not coming out when it locks onto some of these carp. Um, but I'm going to be fishing with like hard six mil pellets, eight mil pellets, four mil pellets, depending on how I feel on the day. So I don't think you want a massive hook. So that's my rig for fishing on the deck. Now, I obviously want to explore the upper layers and I'm not fishing for F1s. I'm, I'm fishing for carp and it tends to be with carp that 
when you get a bike from a carp, they, get, they give you a little bit more extra time. But often, a lot of the time, they sort of almost drag you in because you don't tend to miss many bites. So as a result, I can fish with a longer line between my pole tip and float. So I've set this up here at around about four foot of line, okay? So that means I can fish anything from, I don't know, a foot deep to say three and a half foot deep if I want to. I've got all this upper area of my peg covered. Now, I've got a beautiful little four by 12 mugger float on there. They've got a really thick tip, a three mil tip. I think that's very important because I want it to suspend my pellet. And I'm just gonna, it's very warm today, so I'm just gonna slide this down got some marks on my pole I'm going to slide this down to 18 inches all right so it's just a couple of so it's 20 inches there it is roughly and I'm going to start at that depth and when I go shallow that'll be the depth I go to to start with but I've got total flexibility and when we start fishing shallow I'll talk to you about how I'm going to move that and why but that rig gives me complete flexibility it's got an 020 main line 018 hook length to that 18 again just a few strung out shot it's got three number 10s and a couple underneath the float and I can move that about as much as I like depending. So those two rigs are gonna cover me for all the water that's in front of me at that, at that depth. And I'm just gonna fish a nice comfortable 13 meters today. You know, it's not a lot of wind, it's an easy distance to fish. If I felt I could get an advantage going longer, I would. Um, but generally speaking, 11, 13 meters is a great place to, to do this approach. So really easy couple of rigs to cover everything that I need on this line but really versatile and allows me to work with it. I also need to show you the bait. Okay so the bait for this line couldn't be really much simpler but it is important that you have the right type of bait because if you get it wrong you won't get the same results from your fishing. For a start off all our pellets in fin perfects in six mils and eight mils now, or what we call it's a harder pellet, okay? It's a denser pellet than what we might have had in the past. With the fours and the two mils, they're still, uh, um, I can't, it's hard to describe. They're not as dense, they, they break down a bit quicker because you're likely to be putting them round a method feeder or fishing for smaller fish. But in the bigger pellets, these are a nice, hard, dense pellet. And that's really, really important when you're fishing like this because you don't want the pellets breaking down quickly on the bottom. You want a pellet that's gonna stay intact for a long time so a fish can eat it cleanly and not basically stir up all the bottom, rooting around for all the extra little tiny bits that are coming off it. So for me, it's a six mil. Your size guide is this, right? I always think to myself, what if I'm targeting say four to eight pound carp, so they might average in that sort of range, that six mil is gonna be perfect. Anything above eight, eight pound, let's say they're all gonna be eight pound plus, I don't know where you're gonna go and it's as great as that, maybe a big water such as Boddington's or Barston, then I'm looking at eight mil pellets, I'm looking at that bigger pellet, and if the fish are under four pound, generally that two to four pound area, I'd look at a four mil pellet. Today I'm expecting fish to mainly be between four and eight pounds, so that's why I've got this six mil hard pellet with me, and I've literally got a bag of Thin Perfect six mils, you can see them there all in their nice uniform size, really good quality pellet, nice and hard, isn't going to break down quickly. Very important for catapulting that they're all nice same size as well. So that's a that's a the first thing. And you could just use these out of the bag, right? These these out of the bag would be absolutely fine. But for me, I love a little bit of extra attraction on my pellets, and I also like to be 100% sure that nothing's going to get caught up in the surface tension on any sort of lake there'll be a bit of tension in the surface. Sometimes when you throw your pellets in, they can take five, 10 seconds just to break that tension. I need that to happen straight away. So what I do is I use an absolute fish oil. Now, the fish oil is different to the pellet oil that we do. This is very important because the fish oil actually, by its nature, will rise back up to the surface. So it's very active. It's something that when I put it on the pellets, when it goes in, I'm going to get odd little pimps coming up to the surface and the fish generally love it. They love the smell of it, they love the scent of it and they want to come up and go, what's going on? I need to see what's going on here. Don't want loads of it on. You don't want to be putting tons of it on because it's going to have a detrimental effect. It's going to take fish out of your peg. You want enough to just coat your pellets and effectively give them a little bit of activity. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. Literally get it out here. You can see I've got 
probably half a pint of pellets ready to go. And all I do is just drizzle a little bit of that oil onto the pellets. Now, give them a good stir. Just work it with your fingers. You can see there, I put hardly any on. Don't forget these pellets are hard. And I like to do this, I tend to do it in advance of when I'm gonna fish. I don't like to do it and then fish straight away. I actually like the pellets to absorb a little bit of this oil personally. So what I tend to do is at home, put a tiny bit of this on, and then when I get ready on the bank, my pellets are ready to go. But look, you can see there, they've almost got a bit of a sheen to them. But that means when they hit the water, they're gonna literally go straight down, absolutely no chance of breaking the surface. And then that odd, you know, like how hemp does with a little bit of hemp oil, ping, ping, ping up to the surface. And what that does is it means the fish at all levels will see activity and will see bait, and then they can decide what level they want to sit at. If they want to be on the bottom still, the fact that there's a little bit of pingy oil, they'll be feeding on the bottom, don't you worry about that. But if they want to be in the upper layers, that pingy oil is going to help almost encourage them up. The fish has just gone for my pellets there. Obviously, like very attractive to it. So that's how I prepare the, 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 the pellets. You can see there, hardly any I've used, and I just carry that with me every time because I do think it's very important. The only other thing I've brought with me today is a few pellet o's. Now, what I do with these, if I open these up, these are eight mil, but actually as it happens, I don't think there's a massive size difference between these and, the, and these sixes that we've got. I would say this almost like these are like a seven and a half and they're like a six and a half, if I was being a bit fussy, but they're deep red in color, they're very slightly bigger and they make an amazing hook bait, absolutely amazing. So if I want to fish shallow, I've got a nice deep red colored pellet that the fish can oh, pick it out dead quick. If I want to fish on the bottom, amongst those pellets, I've got a very deep red color pellet. It says bloodworm fish meal on them. Yep, they've got that bit of that sort of almost bloodwormy type smell to them. I'm honestly not bothered because it's just a hook bait. For me, it's about the color and the size. So I always have these in my bag. These are like my alternative hook bait, if you like, and they work perfectly with the Fin Perfect 6 mil, So the bait tray is dead simple. I tend to just get a few of these out in a tub so I've got some hook baits ready to go. And I've got these hard pellets here. It couldn't be much easier than that, but you can just see the little tweaks that I do to make them perfect. Right, got my shades on and I'm ready to start the session. There's no pots involved today. That isn't what I'm looking for. It's all about using my catapult. Um, you want to kick off the session on the deck. Okay, I think it's very warm today. I can see fish moving about. There's a great chance I'm going to be up in the water relatively quickly. I'm just going to put one of the red pellets on to start with because it is one of my favourite hook baits. So I'm just going to pop that in the band there, look, ready to go. And I'm going to show you how I go about kicking off the session. Now, to start with, you want to be thinking about trying to catch on the bottom and trying to feed as if you're catching on the bottom. And then the fish will tell us if they want to if they want to come up in the water. So I'm not I'm actually going to drop my rig in the water, but it's purely it's purely just as a target to start with. So I always think you want quite a few pellets when you're catching on the bottom. So I'm going to get like a dozen six mils, and I'm just going to ping those out in and around my float twice. All right. So I'm just going to there you go. So first ones. We're on my float, second one's a little bit short. I'm happy with that. I'm not looking to be trying to get it. I don't really want anything going past my float, but I want the pellets to be in and around that area. Now, you might notice that I've taken my rig out of the water because what I want to do is that's my first feed. So I've probably fed 25 pellets. I want those pellets to go down to the bottom and I want the fish to come in and be ready to eat on the bottom. So now when I drop my rig in like this, and I'm going to flick it out to the side and I'm almost going to just let it fall dead steady. So obviously my pellet is now coming down well behind those other pellets, so it's visual. It's on its own. It's falling down in a way that the fish are obviously going to look. They might see it there because they're already on the bottom waiting for my pellet. There you go, look. A little indication there straight away. So float set itself nicely. Ooh, a bite straight away. Nice, like it. Now I get another bite straight away. Now, you might notice that I don't 
I love dotting my float down for like silvers and that, but I've got to be honest, when I'm fishing for carp, I like a little bit of bristle showing because that bite there that you saw was really positive and they're the only bites I want to strike at. I don't want to be striking at liners and indications because that's when I'm going to start potentially foul looking fish. Now, the amount of bites that I get today and the amount of liners and indications that I get will dictate, now that was a small little touch there, Will, will tell me where the fish want to be. So already I've had two indications. I haven't fed any bait so far. That was the first bait that I've fed all day. And I've had two indications straight away. Now that tells me the fish are at different depths up in the water, right? It already is telling me that the fish aren't necessarily pinned down to the bottom. And they're the sort of in things that I'm looking for. So I'm obviously going to let the float settle. Like I said, I've got a nice bit of bristle showing. I don't want to have it absolutely dotted right down. I almost want like half the bristle, look, just like that. And you can see there's little indications there. Look at that indication there. Like, yeah, I mean, those fish, they are up. They are up in the water. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Now on another day, you might be going in and you might be literally sitting there with no indications and all of a sudden you float the shoots under and you're attached to a fish. They're the days when the fish are feeding or looking to feed on the bottom more but I'm already got a few indications. Bear in mind, I've only fed once. I'm not like feeding over and over again. Look, see that indication there? In sort of a slow dip on the float, definitely not a proper bite. I'm waiting for the, the float to shoot under. See, look at that again. Amazing, it just goes to show loads of indications. That to me is fishing the shallow layers. And that's why this method is so good because I'm, I can read my peg really quickly. Now, we might catch a few fish shallow, and what might happen is the fish might drop down again, and we'll look at that as that potentially happens throughout the day. But what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get a, that early read of how the fish might want to be before I feed again. Notice I still haven't fed again. I've just fed the 25 pellets on the deck. So, still just going to sit patiently probably give it one more bite like if the next bite isn't a fish in the mouth then I shall immediately look to coming up in the water like I said there's I can see fish moving around it's beautiful and warm classic spring day where <clears throat> we've had a couple of cooler nights and now the temperature's warmed up I mean it, it is much warmer today than it's been the last few days and I can see fish moving all over the lake so I've got a really good feeling that the fish are going to come in the shallow layers, but effectively I'm letting them tell me now. I haven't had quite as many indications. See, look, that's another indication there. It was a little bit stiller, but not as many indications. So that's classic to me and a really good example of how I might go about reading my peg, you see. So let's just hook that up. I'm going to get this mugger out. Now I'm going to start at that 18 inch depth. I'm going to put that big red pellet on as well. It's a nice big visual pellet again. You know, if I have any problems, I might change to the other pellet if I feel there's lots of fish about. Um, but I'm going to start at that 18 inches depth. Now, when you go shallow, effectively, you're looking at the same thing. Notice I still haven't fed again. I'm, I'm relying on the oil pinging up from that, that bait. And what I'm going to do now is I'm effectively just going to flick the rig to the side so you get the plop of the pellet like that. And I'm looking for any indications, signs that there might be some fish up in the water. So any, any bites on the float, you can see the float is dotted quite down there. I might take a shot off that, but that's the beauty of that big three mil bristle. It's just holding up that big pellet. Now, to start with, I'm just looking for any signs, or indications of fish at this shallow depth. If I don't get any, I can just deepen the float off a little bit. I can just make it a little bit deeper I can respond to what the fish might want. And now I might think about starting to feed again, but I'm still gonna be feeding with catching on the bottom in mind, if that makes sense. I'm not necessarily gonna go straight in and try and catch the fish by pinging twos and threes regularly. I don't really wanna do that just yet. So I kinda of wanna attract some fish in now because it's time to do that again. And I'm just gonna feed like a dozen or so pellets twice like I did at the start because we got a lot of indications from that it drew fish in straight away there we go so 
and then just drop my pellet in and amongst those pellets. Gotta remember those pellets have already hit the bottom now. Those pellets have sunk really quickly. We're relying off that bit of noise and that bit of oil. If the fish wanna be shallow, they're gonna show us that straight away. So that's what we're looking for here now. I love to like lift the rig up and drop it in regularly. I don't tend to sit too long. Almost like I'm looking for signs of fish in this really shallow water. I've got to be honest, haven't really had any bites yet at this depth. So it might be that again, I need to explore the depth a little bit. Maybe I need to put another six, eight inches on. See if we get a few bites at that slightly deeper, that slightly deeper level. I'm doing all this for you in real time so you can see how I might think about what's going on. So I'm just gonna bring that back in. And I'm just gonna make that a little bit deeper look. I'm gonna make that, let's say, six inches deeper. I'm gonna take one of these little shot off. So now we're a bit deeper. Let's see if we get any bites at this deeper level. Again, I'm not gonna feed again. There's a few fizzes and that coming off off the bottom. So obviously there is a few fish on the bottom, but those fizzes all create activity in the shallow layers. It's, it's allowing those little, the little, the attraction of the oils of the pellet. And also, obviously, as the bubbles come up, the fish come and see what's going on. Little indication there straight away. You see, difference in depth and indication straight away. Not sure what fish that'll be yet. There's obviously other fish in here as well. Just gonna feed another six pellets on the float. And I'm almost gonna fish as if I'm fishing on the bottom. I'm just gonna sit here, see if the fish want to be at this depth. Do like to lift and drop the float, but I'm trying to learn at the moment if the fish wanna come in and feed at this sort of shallower depth so it's really it's a really interesting way of fishing there you go i've had a bite i've had a bite there at that depth so didn't have any bites when i was at that slightly shallower depth i did miss it so that's the key if you if you when you're fishing if you're missing bites that's when you need to come a little bit shallow there could be some other fish here in there at the moment because I just missed another bite there but that is two bites in a row so that's a great sign that I'm at a depth where some fish are whether they might be roach or or something like that at the moment I don't know but obviously it's keeping me active it's keeping that pellet plipping in through the water and you can see I'm not doing almost that traditional shallow fishing of pinging non-stop I'm just using the noise of the pellets to effectively bring fish into the peg so I can drop down on the bottom again if I want to. That's the key. So I'm just I'm just going to explore and just wait. I'm just going to wait patiently there. I'm, again, you can see I've plopped the rig in. I'm just going to wait for a minute. Let's see if we get a bite at this depth kind of don't want to you know there's no ripple on the water today if the fish want to come up and have an investigate in the upper layers then they will do so you might be ready for a feed again in a minute there we go got it i thought that was going to be the case just sat there didn't lift or drop my rig and the bite was clean just going to ping a few pellets now that's the difference you see the bite was clean, it was on. So I think there was a few roach there. I think they backed off. I've dropped the pellet in and I've just sat there waiting. That's what I've done, all right? I've just literally dropped that in. These fish are so powerful here. Might even have to put some sections back on. Big fish that go all over the place. That's why I've got that 15 Jura slip on. But you can see the difference in the bite. You know, I was sat there waiting, effectively, wasn't getting any indications there as I sat there and the bite came it was nice and clean and it was a fish that wanted to be there look perfectly hooked in the mouth in the upper layers so that's what I'm going to have to work on that's what I'm going to have to work on over the next sort of hour or so where the fish want to be and it'll change it'll move they'll go from different depths they might be at this depth then they might be back on the bottom and we'll try and have a little look at that for you guys so you can 
so you can see how I'm sort of adjusting and adapting the feed as the session goes on. Nice start anyway. So, very interestingly, I've had a brilliant run shallow, really good. Probably caught seven or eight fish in the first hour. But recently, and if you look at the peg right now, it's fizzing like crazy. It really is fizzing a lot. And it just suddenly started fizzing and I've gone 10 minutes without a fish shallow. And I just, I turned to Jake and said, I'm sure those fish have dropped back down. Now, as I, that was my first drop in, and as I lowered it in, it's actually taking it on the drop, but it took it in the last foot, I would say. Like, just as the float was settling, the float shot under, which tells me what I thought. Look, that perfectly hooked. It tells me exactly what I thought, that the fish have basically just dropped down. And often, you can get a quick run like it, like, say, 10 minutes or so without a bite shallow, and it was like, hmm, what's happened here? Conditions haven't changed or anything. It's still nice and sunny and warm. But I think just the fact that I probably caught that many fish shallow, they just sort of think to themselves, hmm, not sure if we're happy being up here. So they drop down on the bottom or towards the bottom. So this is how I fed it. Basically, I put my pellet on, put my pole between the legs. I can see where it's fizzing, so I know where the bait is. And just sort of got like probably about... 18 or so pellets. That's a tiny bit shorter, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to just do it again. Want to draw them down, almost suck them down onto the bottom. So I do it before I ship out because, of like what I said before, I almost want them to be waiting for another pellet to fall, like they were on that one. And just as it settled, it went under. It was a lovely example of why a nice light rig can be good sometimes. So let's have a little drop in, see what happens this time. And you can just, I can see there's less fish, I can see less fish on the surface at the moment. There you go, look at that. Look at that. Just as the float was getting to the bottom, it's gone under. It's almost like fishing on the drop, like you would do for, for roach, but it shows the importance of being flexible enough to, to change with what you're doing. Now, the trouble is at the Glebe, sometimes you get them to here quick and then they go for a big run, but let's see. But I've just put two fish quickly really quickly to be fair after having that little barren spell of fish you know fishing shallow so that's what i wanted to demonstrate to you guys today that's what i wanted to show you how important it was to be versatile enough to change got him be versatile enough you know pick this rig up i mean i don't think you'll get a better two examples of that and both times there you know I wasn't fishing on the bottom. It, oh, effectively, that fish has nailed it in the last foot of water. Almost like they, they're still happy to be off the bottom, but that's where they are. But I can see that the peg's totally different. It's fizzing now. It wasn't fizzing when I was fishing shallow. So look for those signs. Be versatile because, you know, I might catch another five, six, seven carp now on the bottom. And somebody who's persevered shallow might just catch another one. So that's why I want to show you this method today because it, it really is about you reacting to what you see in the peg. And it's a really nice way of fishing. So I'm going to catch a few more and we'll see, we'll see if they uh, move up or, up or down in the next hour or so. Definitely going to catch another one on the bottom now, I'm sure. So 
So it's been a brilliant session. And what amazed me so much is that it's been on the bottom. Now, after that initial start, which was so good shallow, I thought you guys might just be watching a bit of a shallow video today. But it hasn't been like that. It's been either just as the rig has settled or sort of a couple of minutes after it's settled. Nice clean bite. And look at the, you can see that, look at that. It's been absolutely brilliant fishing. It's almost, they've got their heads down on that bait and I've caught 20 carp on the bottom today. And I just wouldn't have predicted that with the, the warm sunshine that we've got and the, you know, it's almost as if they came up early, caught a few in that warmer sunshine and then they've gone, we're in a feeding mood. So they've just dropped down to where they wanted to be. And that was, that was what I said at the start of the day. It's where they want to be. You've got to catch them where they want to be. And they definitely, definitely want to be on the bottom now. Whereas earlier on, it was brilliant shallow. And I thought, oh, we're just, we're going to catch a load shallow. But it's just been all on the bop bottom and the fishing's been brilliant. The, the best thing to do has been, if you can, either when you hook a fish or while you're playing a fish at this point, just try and tee it up for the next one with like, 15 to 20 pellets, I would say. That seems to have been the best way. And the fish have been a great stamp on the bottom as well. They haven't necessarily, sometimes they're just the little ones, but they've not been, they've been, they've been a great stamp. Just gonna, sometimes you can sort of net these fish without using a puller. It's almost as if they're quite happy to, to come up. There's, there seems to be 10, two ways of doing it really. You might get him there without a puller, if not, it needs like two or three pulls just to get complete control and net them. I do like to try and net them without, if I can, if there's an opportunity to get them without the puller, I do like that because you're putting so much less pressure on the hook hold. But of course, that's what the puller is there for. So here he comes. And they're lovely fish and it's been incredible. It's been, I just, it's opened my eyes. I mean, maybe last hour they come shallow again, but I've been fishing now over three hours and the last two hours, it's just been solid, absolutely solid on the deck. Exactly, you know, why I wanted to show you this method today and how deadly it can be. Because you don't need loads of different baits. You just need a variety of rigs and what I think fishing's all about, reading your swim. So if you can read your swim, there's loads of venues up and down the country with fabulous carp like these, hard pellets up and down. Hope you've learned a bit today and you can apply it when you go fishing out next.